Okay, so what I want to do is go over this uh, news article, or newspaper, press release, if you will, from the National Institute of Health regarding the blood-based biomarkers, which can be used to detect, predict severity of traumatic brain injury. So this is great. So when it comes to, um, originally, when we had to use this biomarker, which is known as the neurofilament light chain, we would usually have to do some form of cerebral spinal fluid extraction, and that is a little bit more difficult than just taking a blood sample. So this is great because now we can diagnose the severity of people's uh, brain trauma just from a blood sample alone, or before we had to use these uh, cerebral spinal uh, fluid samples, which is just a little bit more difficult, and you, you can't take those as regularly as you can a uh, blood sample. So um, with that, I'm going to go into depth. So if you just wanted that news, you can go and leave the video now. But if you want to go into the science a little bit, I will take you through this. So a uh, blood-based biomarker can detect, predict severity of, detect and predict severity of traumatic brain injury. So a study from the NIH confirms that neurofilament light chain, um, it, as a blood biomarker, can detect brain injury and predict recovery in multiple groups, including professional hockey players with acute or chronic concussions and clinic-based patients with mild, moderate, or severe traumatic brain injury. And so here we have the neurofilament light chain. So these are proteins that are on the axon which is the long part of the nerve cell, uh, this, is, this neurofilament light chain normally exists on those axons. However, if there is damage to the neurons, then this neurofilament light chain will come off along with a lot of other things. They just might, uh, a lot of other proteins might degrade, but this is one of the main ones. And as it degrades and falls off of the neuron, it will collect in the cerebrospinal fluid. And so this if you take a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid, it will, and you see this neurofilament light chain in there, this tells you that there are some, there's some nerve death in the, or in the body somewhere. So let us go to the Wikipedia page of neurofilament light chain, just so that I can show you. And sometimes it's called the neurofilament light chain polypeptide, and unfortunately, they don't have a good uh, photo of it, but um, neurofilament light chain, this is a biomarker, and it can be measured with amino assays in the cerebrospinal fluid and plasma, and reflects axonal damage in a wide variety of neurological disorders, and it is a useful biomarker for disease monitoring, monitoring in uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as motor neuron disease or Lou Gehrig's disease, so uh, awful, awful disease, but that is one of the biomarkers that can tell you about how severe your Lou Gehrig's disease is becoming. Um, the same thing goes for multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's disease, and more recently Huntington's disease has also been shown to uh, where a neurofilament light chain is a, a, an appropriate biomarker of Huntington's disease. So this tells you if you have elevated levels of neurofilament light chain in the cerebrospinal fluid, it doesn't tell you exactly what disease you have. It can, is only telling you that there is neuronal death. So you would use this in a conjunction in conjunction with other assays or other tests to see what disease this person uh, actually has. So anyways, it is also associated with the Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease, which is this, and this is a, a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy of the peripheral nervous system. So that's interesting. So um, yeah, just so you know, this is this is what we are talking about. So going back to this, this research was conducted by scientists at the NIH Clinical Center in Bethsaida, Maryland, and published in the July 8th. 2020 online issue of neurology. So after a traumatic brain injury, neurofilament light chains break away from the neurons in the brain and collects in the cerebral spinal fluid. And the scientists confirmed that neurofilament light chain also collects in the blood in levels that correlate closely with the levels in the CSF. So this would be some, a point, how do I phrase that? Um, so let's say the neurofilament light chain 
did get into the blood regularly, but if it did not correlate properly with the concentrations that were in the cerebral spinal fluid, this might, that would have made it too noisy or too difficult to use blood-based uh, methods or assays to, uh, to do this correlation or to, uh, yeah, to correlate with the severity of the disease. So here, they demonstrated that the neurofilament light chain in the blood can detect brain injury and predict the recovery across all stages of traumatic brain injury. So not just right after you get your concussion, um, it can tell you the severity of the brain deterioration throughout all stages of a neurological disorder. So currently, or at the time, there are no validated blood-based biomarkers to provide it an objective diagnosis of mild traumatic brain injury or to predict recovery, uh, said Leighton Chan, uh, MD and MPH, chief of the Rehabilitation Medicine Department at the NIH uh, Clinical Center. So our study reinforces the need and a way forward for a non-invasive test. So the cerebrospinal fluid test, that would be invasive because you would have to tap into the, the cerebral spinal fluid, so tap into the nervous system a little bit. Um, but here we have a non-invasive test of neurofilament light chain to aid in the diagnosis of patients and athletes whose brain injuries are often unrecognized, undiagnosed, or underreported. So this would be very beneficial. Let's say you are in professional sports, or maybe not even professional sports. Let's say you're doing college sports as well. And let's say you have no outward clinical symptoms at all. However, if there is a brewing, um, if there is a brewing um, disease that is just taking a while to rear its ugly head, um, that might take decades after you have uh, been playing your sport, it would be good. It'd be act it'd be excellent if you could take a blood test, something that was non-invasive that could be done regularly, and they. If you take this test over and over again, it might tell you, hey, you just recently had a spike in this neurofilament light chain, uh, so therefore you probably had some brain injury recently. So we would recommend that you uh, be a little bit more careful for this upcoming period, and we will monitor it to make sure it's not getting progressively worse. So if it was getting progressively worse, that means that you might have to retire early, but maybe it's better to retire with your health than it is to progressively hurt yourself more and more. So it'd be a way to recognize your own weaknesses. Anyways, the study examined multiple groups, including professional hockey players in Sweden, Sweden, sorry, I, <laughs> Siberia, with sports-related concussions, hockey players without concussions, hockey players with persistent post-concussion syndrome, sorry, symptoms, uh, with non-athlete controls and clinic-based patients at the NIH Clinical Center who were healthy or with acute, subacute, and chronic mild traumatic brain injuries. So the study showed that neurofilament light chain in the blood, one, correlates with the cerebrospinal fluid neurofilament light chain in hockey players with concussions and non-athlete healthy controls, suggesting that blood neurofilament light chain could be used to used instead of the cerebral spinal fluid neurofilament light chain. Uh, this is also, uh, this demonstrated strong diagnostic ability for the sports related concussions where it could identify hockey players with concussions from hockey players without concussions and could identify clinic based patients with mild, moderate and severe traumatic brain injuries from each other and controls. So theoretically, this could be a way um, if you wanted to do a quick test before a game to figure out which one of your players has brain injury at that time. That way you can keep them from playing that particular game. This could be a game changer in, uh, in improving the health and well-being of our professional athletes. So this is significant as there is an unmet need for an easy and accessible blood, bio, easy and accessible blood biomarker to determine at the time of injury or in the chronic phase if a person has concussion or signs of traumatic brain injury. Now, granted, I don't know how long this would take, but let's say you have a game and um, you wanted to know right away who has a concussion, who doesn't have a concussion. This might be a way to get rapid results for that. So, and three, this could distinguish with high accuracy hockey players who could return to play after 10 days from those who developed persistent post-concussion symptoms and eventually retired from the game. So in the, 
yeah, and you know, it would obviously not be the best thing if you had to quit your your sport and your love, but this this is a reality that many of us will have to face. So in clinic based in the clinic-based cohort, patients with worse functional outcomes had higher blood neurofilament level chain or light le chain levels. Uh, this is significant as there is an unmet need for a blood biomarker that can help clinicians to determine when athletes can safely return to play or when patients can return to work or resume daily activities. So remember, none of this is linear, right? So if you do see the effects of an of a concussion, you would want that person to rest and fully heal before they risk getting another concussion right away. Because if you do that, it's not it's not linear. Like they will work holistically. Uh, if you get multiple concussions, it's better if they're spread out further than right after each other. You know, granted, I'm just presuming this, but you know, perhaps that's not actually the case, right? Anyways, in the clinic-based patients, the levels of blood neurofilament light chain, light chain at five years after a single mild, moderate, or severe traumatic brain injury, these were significantly increased compared to the healthy controls. And this suggests that even a single mild traumatic brain injury without visible signs of structural damage on the standard clinical MRI, this may cause long-term brain injury and serum neurofilament light could be sens a sensitive biomarker to detect even that far out from initial injury. So yeah, here they're saying if there was a significant brain injury, you still see high or elevated levels of neurofilament light chain long afterwards. And even even if you cannot see that on an MRI, so that is that is really good information to know. So this study is the first to detect uh, wait, is the first to do a detailed assessment of a serum neurofilament light chain and advanced brain imaging in multiple cohorts, uh, brain injury severities and time points after injury said the lead author. So our results suggest that serum neurofilament light chain may provide a valuable complement to imaging by detecting underlying neuronal damage, which may be responsible for the long-term symptoms experienced by a significant number of athletes with acute concussion and patients with more severe brain injuries. So, um, and just going to hit pause in the context in the context of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, um, I very coincidentally did another paper that went over neurofilament light chain, but they did uh, cerebrospinal fluid samples because that was the standard, right? Um, so in that other video that I actually posted today, uh, this, uh, a, German, a German clinic or a group of German clinics studied patients with neuropathies or neurological pathologies and one that were the result of SARS-CoV-2 infection or having corona or COVID-19. And there they did use the this filament, uh, neurofilament light chain as a biomarker. Granted, it was difficult to do, or I, I shouldn't say difficult, but it was, you know, another intensive process that they had to do in order to get that data. And granted, all of them showed elevated serum levels of neurofilament light chain, or at least a significant number of them. I don't know if all of them did. Regardless, this is not, um, it would not be practical at all to use these, uh, to do these spinal fluid taps in order to uh, diagnose everyone in the world. However, if there was a simple test, a simple blood test, that we could do, this would be excellent because this could then warn our doctors of who might have neurological complications due to SARS-CoV-2 or having COVID-19. And it might be that everyone has that happening, right? It could be, well, shoot. <laughs> I, I didn't even think about that, but it could be that everyone really has some level of neurological uh, disorder. And so maybe a fast acting blood sample test would be an absolutely a game changing way to uh, test everyone, or at least test as many people who want that test to see what will the severity of their neurological damage be. Anyways, let's continue. 
So the study was funded by the Intramural Research Program at NIH and the Department of Defense, Center of Neuroscience and Regenerative Medicine at the Uniformed Services University and the Swedish Research Council. Oh, and here they're just saying traumatic brain injury is a major leading cause of death and disability in the United States with more than 2.87 million emergency department visits, hospitaliz hospitalizations, and deaths annually. While majority of all traumatic brain injuries are classified as mild, it remains difficult to diagnose this condition. Uh, there are a wide range of variable behavioral and obs observational tests to help determine a patient's injuries, but most of these tests rely on the patient to self-report signs and symptoms. Also, imaging has limitations with detection of microstructural injuries at the brain. So here they're saying that things such as MRIs might not be able to give you detailed information on the microscopic damage that is happening to nerves. And sometimes, well, it's a noisy field, right? Sometimes you won't even be able to detect any of that injury if all that injury is too small and too dispersed, too diffuse throughout the entire, uh, th throughout the entire brain. So here it is important, uh, here it's important to have a, a simple, easy test that can show, at least through a biomarker, that there is damage and that you need to take care of it. So let's see if there's anything else that I need to talk about, and I don't think there is. So um, with that, I will leave, and if you want, you can... Uh, go to the journal Neurology yourself and you can read this paper. And I don't know if it, let's see if they have a link here. Yeah, I can't find the link right away. So just so that y'all know, um, you can go to the journal of Neurology to look this video up yourself. So thanks for watching and I will hopefully have another video out soon.